If there's other comments or questions, I'll call for the vote. And uh, Michelle, if you could do the uh, roll, please. Mary Blosh. Yes. Tony Jackson. Yes. Sandy Levin. Yes. Brian Petrie. Yes. Alan Dale. Yes. So that's carried. Thank you. Uh, item number three. I do not believe there's any business arising from the minutes. So that takes us down to item number four, um, which is the application uh, number 03-22. And so uh, <clears throat> we first of all need a motion to, uh, to conduct this hearing. Um, so motion to sit as a hearing committee to consider application number 03-22 by Brad Scott to permit interference with the wetland and to permit development within an erosion hazard associated with a river or a stream valley and within an area regulated by the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority at 181183 Harris Road in the municipality of Middlesex Center, it's in Delaware, Ontario. Would someone care to move that motion? I will so move. Moved by Brian. Seconded Second by Tony. Tony, thank you. Any discussion on the motion? I'm not hearing or seeing anything, so I'll call for the vote. Uh, Michelle, if you could do the roll, please. Mary Blosh. Yes. Tony Jackson. Yes. Sandy Levin. Yes. Brian Petrie. Yes. Alan Dale? Yes. Okay, that motion is carried. So I am, um, of course, I'm following the hearing procedures, um, which are the next couple of pages in the package. I won't read them all through because uh, everyone uh, has been provided them this time. Um, but we'll follow along here. We do have the motion. We are now sitting as a hearing. Um, I first of all want to double check that everyone can hear me. Um, if anyone has any problems with uh, uh, connection issues, uh, please make sure to uh, make it known in the, in the chat feature. Uh, let us know. Uh, we want to keep everybody in the meeting here and keep everything on track. Um, do also need to do a roll call just so we know that everyone is here for this hearing. So. Uh, Michelle, I'll ask you to do the roll call for attendance. Marie Blosch. I'm here. Tony Jackson. Still here. Sandy Levin. Here. Brian Petrie. I'm here. And Alan Dale. Present. Okay, thank you. We have all five committee members here. Do any of the hearing committee members have any conflicts to declare in relation to this hearing. Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing anything. We've done the roll call. We've made sure everyone is uh, in the meeting and everyone can hear. So we are now going to conduct a hearing under section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act in respect to an application by Brad Scott, application number 03-22 to permit interference with a wetland and to permit development within an erosion hazard associated with a river or stream valley and within an area regulated by the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority at 181 and 183 Harris Road in the municipality of Middlesex Center, Delaware, Ontario. The authority has adopted regulations under section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act, which requires the permission of the authority for development within an area regulated by the authority in order to ensure no adverse effect on the control of flooding, erosion, dynamic beaches or pollution or conservation of land, or to permit alteration to a water course or interference with a wetland. The staff has reviewed this request from the applicant and a copy of the staff report has been given to the applicant. The Conservation Authorities Act Section 28, subsection 12 provides that permission required under a regulation made under clause 1, B, or C 
shall not be refused or granted subject to conditions unless the person requesting permission has been given the opportunity to require a hearing before the authority or if the authority so directs before the authority's executive committee. In holding this hearing, the hearings committee is to determine whether or not the application is to be allowed and a permit is to be issued with or without conditions. In doing so, we can only consider the material that is before us, the staff report, such evidence as may be given, and the submissions to be made on behalf of the applicant. The proceedings will be conducted according to the Statutory Powers Procedure Act. Under Section 5 of the Canada Evidence Act, a witness may refuse to answer any question on the ground that the answer may tend to incriminate the person or may tend to establish his or her liability to a civil proceeding at the instance of the Crown or of any other any person. The procedure in general shall be informal without the evidence being before it being given under oath or affirmation. If the applicant has any questions to ask the hearings committee or the authority representative, I ask that they be directed to the chair. And I will now uh, ask the staff to please introduce the hearing participants at this time. So over to you, Karen. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, committee members. Um, uh, Brad Scott is the applicant on this. He's the, also the landowner and um, he is representing himself today. And for Brad's benefit, I know you've just heard everybody's name uh, probably five times already, but I'm just going to go through um, their names again. And it's been a long time since I've seen the board members. So I'm going to try and remember whatever, who, um, which municipality they all represent. It's a uh, it's been a long time. So Alan Dale's the chair. Uh, he represents the township of Norwich and Southwest Oxford, just Norwich. I'm on council township of Norwich, but I also represent Southwest Oxford as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, Brian Petrie represents the town of Ingersoll. Sandy Levin represents the city of London. Um, I have uh, Tony Jackson who represents the township of Perth South, uh, the town of St. Mary's, and I feel like there was another one for Tony as well. South, South Huron. Huron. The municipality of South Huron and Marie Blosh, who also represents the city of London. Um, I can no longer see Brad on my screen. I'm assuming he's still there. Yes, fair enough. And then uh, Brad, we also have the authority solicitor, Grant Inglis. Uh, Tracy Annett is our general manager. And um, we have some staff members, Jenna Elaine, Manager of Planning and Regulations, Emily Chandler, uh, who is uh, doing our tech today, uh, and Michelle Vigliante, who is our um, executive assistant, uh, uh, taking the, looking after everything for the hearing today. Um, so, if uh, do I have screen share abilities, Emily? I can give them to you. Yeah, I'm. One second. Because I don't, I can't ask, it won't let me do it right now. I think there, okay. So I've made you co-host. So I think you should be able to, and I'll stop sharing mine. Okay. Yeah, that works. Ah, where's my from beginning there. Please bear with me. I'm, I haven't done this in a while. So again, we're here uh, to look at application 0322. Uh, it's a section 28 application for development, interference with wetlands and alterations to shorelines and water courses permit application. And it's been submitted for the proposed installation, construction of a driveway or laneway that traverse that would traverse through wetland and erosion hazard slope features at 181, 183 Harris Road in the municipality of Middlesex Center. So this is a um, location map of the properties. It's, it's one property, but it's related with another one. So this is 183 Harris Road, it's in Delaware. Um, and then we have 181 Harris Road. They are both um, um, bounded by Dingman Creek on the north end of the property. Dingman Creek is one of the longest creeks in our watershed. It starts in the municipality of Thames Center, goes all the way through the city of London and then down through Middlesex Center where it enters the um, main branch of the Thames River in the Delaware area. It has a, a huge floodplain associated with it by the time it gets down to the Delaware area. And um, these two properties 
currently share a driveway on the, can, if everybody can see my cursor, hopefully, on the uh, northeast uh, edge of the property, there's a shared driveway that goes back to both the residents on 183 and to um, an existing roundabout driveway um, on uh, 183, sorry, 181. And there's a lot of regulations affecting the property. The entire property is regulated by the Conservation Authority. There's a lot of layers, so I separated them out into different maps so you could see individually what all the regulations are. This is the floodplain uh, on the property that's associated with Dingman Creek. You can see it's mostly at the back of the property, and you'll see why when I show you the contours in a minute. This is the estimated erosion uh, hazard and slope hazards for the property. The red areas are where it gets to be steep slopes on the property. This is the estimated wetland uh, areas on the property. Um, it's provincially significant wetland off the property to the north. Uh, you can see pieces of it through the Damien Creek Valley on the property itself. It's not, it has never been designated as either provincially significant or locally significant, but it has been evaluated as a wetland. Um, the woodlands on the property are protected and have been identified as being significant in the Middlesex County Natural Heritage Study. So they're protected under the county's woodlands conservation bylaw. And then, um, so when it comes to erosion hazards, uh, these are, this is, this is contours on the property that you can see. So the, the top of the topography of the property, there are one meter contour intervals. So again, if you can see my cursor, um, it's hard to tell from a two dimensional picture, but if you've been out there and you're standing on the road, the property goes up and then it drops down to the Damien Creek Valley. So down here at the front, there's a um, wetland area, which is kind of the bathtub on the property. It's a low line area by the road. The contours go up to the property to the west there. You can see that there's like a hill that goes up and then it also goes up as you go back to the area um, where we're talking about a clearing as well. So, um, and then it just drops. It's a very steep drop down to the Damon Creek Valley. Um, here's an aerial photo taken of the front half of the property. And uh, this one's taken in 2015 and you can see um, the woodlot area. And, and these aerial photos are usually flown in the early spring before the leaves are on the trees so it doesn't look like there's a lot of trees or maybe dead trees but that's because the ones at the front here are more deciduous and then you can see the darker green or sorry yes deciduous and then the darker green ones are more conifers on the property so that's the only difference the area uh, right around here near the road um, is wetland and uh, I mean those of us who stare at Aerial photos every day, we can tell that's wetland area because it looks kind of pocky. Um, that's the only way I know how to describe it to all of you. And then this is an aerial photo taken of the same vantage point. Again, early spring, so you can see all the deciduous trees with the leaves are not fully out yet uh, after the winter. And then you can see the coniferous trees. Um, and now um, still wetland on the property, but um, it's a, an excavated pond style wetland there. Um, so just a, a photo from the front. These are taken from Google Street View. This is a photo taken in June of 2014 from the road. You can see um, the wetland features, wetland vegetation at the front, but it's more of a vegetated wetland. And then you can see at the back, the property goes up. There's a hill at the back, like a, a ridge all the way around the property. Uh, same vantage point, but this is taken in June of 2021. You can see uh, uh, still a wetland, but now it's an, an excavated open pond style wetland on the property. And then you can see the trees on the ridge around the, the wetland. <clears throat> so in early December of 2021, um, we the, the Conservation Authority received complaints of tree removal site grading and drainage works in the vicinity of the subject property. So our staff went out to uh, for a site visit on Harris Road and we narrowed down that the construction works were, were evident on the southwest side of 181 Harris Road, um, as well as a cleared area at the top of bank, of bank to Dingman Creek at the back, at the end of a, a driveway, a, a newly created driveway. <clears throat> Excuse me, we met with the landowner on site and advised of our regulations that the entire property is regulated by the Conservation Authority and uh, there was a need for Conservation Authorities Act permits before any site grading works were done on, on a property. We further advised that the current works did not appear to meet Upper Thames policy, so the options were either remove the existing driveway um, and then restore the area where the driveway and the, the cleared area at the back had been put in or apply for a permit. And because at a staff level, we wouldn't be able to approve 
Um, this because it didn't meet our policies um, request a hearing. So the landowner chose the option to, uh, he was interested in keeping the, the, the laneway through the property. So he was interested in, in applying for a permit and he requested a hearing. So as part of the application process, we received uh, the application form, site plan, um, a, a basic restoration proposal, um, copies of letters from the municipality regarding um, an access permit that was issued, um, letters of support from some of his consultants, um, a sentiment and erosion control plan, and he's provided a YouTube video as well. I'm actually gonna let him show you the YouTube video. I believe he wants to um, uh, show you the YouTube video himself. <clears throat> All these uh, are part of the hearing report, so I didn't rehash, re replace, re-put them in the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation today. So this is a, a map the landowner sent. Again, it's just a location map of the property. And this is a close-up of um, partly the existing and partly some of the pro still proposed works on the site. So you can see my cursor shows up there. <clears throat> There's a new driveway, uh, Langley, that goes from the west side now of Harris Road back up to a cleared area right in here. It's, it's showing as a straight driveway, but when um, you see the YouTube video, if you haven't already seen it, um, and I know there's snow cover on the driveway. Excuse me, <clears throat> one second. Dry weather in January. <clears throat> when you see the YouTube video, it's not a straight driveway. It winds uh, under a bit of fallen snow through the um, um, hilled areas, the slope areas on the west side of the site. And it goes back and then you'll see an opening cleared area, which you can see near the end of the um, YouTube video when it turns around and it looks back toward the road. So you can see the cleared area with some um, brush that's been pushed kind of to the top of bank. Uh, this is the top of bank that goes down to Damon Creek. So there's been some brush push there. And then you can see the driveway winding back through to Harris Road. Um, the landowner is also interested in still bringing in some topsoil um, to uh, even out the edges of the road and deal with Phragmites uh, on the property. Um, to be fair, there is a huge Phragmites issue on the property. It's on both this side of Harris Road and it's on the um, adjacent property or the, the property on the other side of Harris Road. They're both, they both have a Phragmites um, issue and it, it, we know it's really hard to get rid of Phragmites. So um, one thing landowners have done is just dig out the Phragmites to create an open water pond. It's not always ideal, but um, that has been done at other sites as well. So he is interested in dealing with the Phragmites removal, um, bringing some more topsoil in and then planting uh, adjacent the driveway with some plugs and trees. And I'll let him, I'll let the landowner tell you more about um, his restoration proposal when, when he gets to speak. This is another um, plan he sent in showing basically the driveway. This one shows the curve on the driveway. <clears throat> There's a little, he shows a stream here, but it's not a regulated water course. It's such a slope here. It's more of a, um, like where water would come just after a rainfall event, but in, it's not a regulated water course by any means. Um, still wants to bring in topsoil adjacent the, the laneway and um, plants and trees. Again, I'll let him go into that, uh, the restoration plan some more detail. Uh, the landowner also advised us, <clears throat> excuse me, that he was issued an entrance permit from the municipality. Um, and this has been happening quite a bit lately where the roads departments, the roads authorities are issuing entrance permits to areas where we would not want to see a a road or a driveway, but he did receive an entrance permit for the driveway off that side of the road. So <clears throat> what we're looking at is construction of a new uh, driveway through wetland and erosion hazard slope features. The driveway is approximately 450 feet in length and then there's a, a, a cleared area at the back. So conservation authorities have a legislative responsibility for the regulation of development in or adjacent to river stream valleys, shorelines, water courses, flood and erosion hazard lands and wetlands. The grading to create a driveway, a laneway and the filling proposed adjacent to wetland are considered development by definition. And I've given you the definition of development here. So development, it's not just structures like buildings. It also includes, as with item C, site grading, or with item D, um, the temporary or permanent placing, dumping, or removal of any material. And that would include things like fill, topsoil, gravel. 
Uh, however, section three of the uh, conservation also states that, or the of our regulation states that the authority may grant permission for development in the air, in these areas. If in our opinion, the control of flooding, erosion, dynamic beaches, pollution, or the conservation of land will not be affected by development. These are referred to as the five tests and we must consider them on all development applications. Now, we don't have dynamic beaches because we don't have Great Lakes shorelines. So really we're only looking at what we call the four tests in our authority. Again, this is a, a reminder of what kind, some of the existing uh, project is and some uh, of the project that's still proposed for the site. So looking at the tests, is it development in the floodplain? So just a reminder, the floodplain associated with Damon Creek is at the back of the property. The works the landowner is looking to do is at the front of the property. So uh, they're not in the floodplain, uh, nor are they affecting uh, flooding on the property. Is it development in a river or stream valley? Well, again, looking at the contours I showed you, the steep slope, the top of bank, basically going down to the valley land for Damon Creek is at the back half of the property. So there is the cleared area is starting, it's it's at the top of bank basically. Um, the driveway itself is not, it winds down to Harris Road. It does wind through a bit of um, a slope here, um, but not specifically associated with uh, the Damon Creek um, Stream Valley. Is a development affecting the conservation of land? Well, potentially, but um, generally we use the conservation of land or, or it has been used in the context of development in a river or stream valley. Um, and again, this development, um, it's not in the stream valley proper. It's not alteration to a water course. There's no regulated water course at the front half of the property. Um, however, uh, a driveway laneway going through these features, it is development in a potential erosion slope hazard and it is um, considered interference with the wetland according to our regulations. So again, a reminder of where the estimated wetland is on the property. Having been to the property, this map, um, I would say it's not completely accurate. It's very conservative. For sure, there's wetland features there. For sure, the driveway encroaches onto the wetland features through here. Um, but this is not all wetland on the west side of the property and up to the, the top of the slope of Damon Creek. So again, our wetland policies, I've included some more policies with your package, but the, the basic ones are new development and site alteration is not permitted in wetlands. Some restricted uses may be permitted provided they are supported by an EIS or an environmental assessment. In general, there's not a lot of projects that, that we issue approval for within the wetland proper. And we have historically not um, allowed a new road or driveway to go through the actual wetland itself. Uh, outside the wetland proper, we still regulate an area of interference around a wetland. So development that could affect the wetland by proximity to the wetland. So, uh, the area of interference for a wetland that's provincially significant or greater than two hectares in size is 120 meters. Um, and that meets um, the area of interference of a wetland that we're looking at today. So um, again, when we're looking at uh, development in the area of interference of a wetland, we have a whole bunch of policies of things that can happen within that area of interference, but generally we don't allow a new driveway right up against uh, uh, the wetland itself. Um, so just kind of summarizing what we just went through, uh, it's not impacting the control of flooding, um, but it's borderline on the uh, erosion hazard. So if any structures were proposed for the cleared area at the back, now or in the future, a favorable geotechnical slope stability assessment would be required as the slope at that location towards Damon Creek, it's very steep and would be high risk for erosion. So the landowner has um, indicated that perhaps a house in the future in that cleared area we would want more geotechnical um, information before we could even consider a house at that location. It's sandy, it's very steep. It might not be an option. However, the slope the driveway is on is in contrast uh, near the front of the property, it's less steep. Um, and if we have proper construction, drainage and restoration plantings could mitigate the potential for erosion. The new driveway does however, route through an adjacent wetland features. And this is kind of the outstanding issue that doesn't meet our policy. Uh, however, the landowner is proposing a restoration plan. He's willing to work with stewardship groups, including ourselves for um, removal of fragmites and revegetation of the slopes and the wetland areas in an attempt to improve the, improve the site. 
Um, and any like rill erosion, small erosion, we could work with him for um, mitigations on that as well with plantings. So in summary, our approval is required for issuance of permits under Regulation 15706 um, for any works in uh, erosion hazards, um, slope hazards, floodplains, wetlands, uh, shorelines, watercourses. Um, applications which we get which conform to any board approved policy um, can be um, approved by staff. But if they don't meet board approved policy, staff cannot approve the application at our level and it needs to go to the hearings committee for approval. So only the hearings committee can uh, approve or deny an application. So um, because at a staff level, I'm looking at the project and it doesn't meet board approved policies, um, I have no choice but to um, recommend that the proposed interference with the wetland and proposed development within an erosion hazard associated with a river or stream valley and area regulated by the Conservation Authority at 181-183 Harris Road in the municipality Middlesex Center, uh, Delaware, Ontario be denied as, is, as it is contrary to Upper Thames approved wetland alteration and erosion hazard policies. Okay. So um, the applicant did submit a YouTube video. I was going to wait and let him show you that one uh, as, as well. So I don't know if you have questions now or if you want to wait till after the applicant shows you. Well, I, th I thought Mr. Chair, a procedure is that the staff does its report and then the applicant presents and then the staff uh, may question the applicant. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, that's true. Okay, so if, if no one has any questions right now, we will proceed then to uh, Mr. Scott and uh, we'll turn it over to you and you can give us your presentation. And, and Brad, if you don't have, I, if you need access to any of the slides I just put up, let me know and I'll bring them up. And if you need me to bring up the YouTube video, I can do that as well. And I'll leave it to you. Yeah, perfect, uh, perfect. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I'd like to start this morning by saying good morning to all of you. And Thanks for the opportunity to be in front of the committee. Uh, really want to thank Karen too. She's been very helpful through this. Uh, of course, uh, my second thing is I'd like to apologize for the oversight here. Uh, it certainly wasn't my intention uh, to do any of this work, um, you know, maliciously. And I, I think I pointed that out to, to Karen and I wanted to point it out to committee members, I mean, committee members. I started this project probably about four years ago. And uh, it was all in spite of trying to get rid of Frag Mighty. The area was completely covered, as you've seen in the, in the videos. Uh, wildlife, the, the deer, nothing was coming through that area anymore because it, you know, the middle of some of that stuff's 12, 15 feet tall. Well, that was my mission to do that. So I, I, I started out by reaching out to the Ministry of Natural Resources. And, and, and I also reached out to Ducks Unlimited because I know they have some programs over there for wetlands. And... Uh, and rehabilitation. Uh, I'll start too by saying I didn't recognize it as a wetland at all. I just thought Ducks Unlimited would be a good reach out to say, hey, this is what's happening here. Can you help me? So when I did that, they uh, they took a look at the area, but they said the project was really too small for what they were looking for, you know, as far as they like bigger plots of land in, in, uh, in the agricultural area, which I am in the agriculture area, but just wasn't big enough for their, for their liking. Uh, so anyway, I, I then went to uh, Alice, a group that uh, does habitat and we, we do native plants and they do all that kind of planting with trees and stuff like that. So I reached with them. So I'm going back probably about two or three, four years ago. They gave me some indications on how to deal with Frag Mighty. One was obviously to dig it out and the uh, and then have it buried deeper than three feet. It's 36 inches of cover on top of it. It will actually uh, drown it out. <clears throat> so I was in touch with them. So anyway, again, I, I just wanted to apologize. I certainly started this project doing this with really good intentions. I, I've been in the area for 36 years. I'm a business owner in town. Um, I lived here on the property for 33 years and uh, I, I feel like I'm a, definitely a steward of the, of the land. It's a beautiful area. And uh, so I, I wanted to point that out to you. It certainly isn't my intent to, to destroy what I have. So um, back to Karen, uh, thanks you for the report. I think it's, I think it was well done and I appreciate your help on it. Uh, it was a surprise uh, when Karen knocked on my door uh, back in December and informed me of the situation. 
So we went for a little walk that day and uh, she pointed out what my options were. Uh, the, the driveway itself, uh, I put it in there, as you can see in my permit, I, I put it in there to access that side of the property. I have a small tractor on the property, a little 40 horse a diesel tractor, and I could get over on the bank that she's referring to on the, that would be the southwest bank where the laneway is now. Uh, it was rather dangerous because I was a bit of on, on a bit of an angle and stuff like that. So my goal was to get in there and be able to access that side and hopefully maintain it, uh, the Frank Mighty. So um, anyway, that was the purpose of getting the laneway. I went to the township. I got a permit for it back in 2020. Uh, I think we got the entrance part put in uh, shortly, might even have been spring. I had the permit for a while, but everybody was so busy with COVID and stuff like that. So it ended up taking me a full year to get the actual uh, entrance done. And then uh, that's when the uh, we uh, Karen come to see me to say that she'd had a couple complaints uh, about what I was doing. Uh, we did remove a little bit of uh, uh, scruff trees. I did take out one rather large walnut tree at the back that was in the area where we we uh, restored the sand from. And, uh, but, but I also burn wood here on the property uh, in my garage, I have a wood stove and uh, I also do uh, uh, woodworking. So I, I have every intention of using that wood to make, um, to make projects out of. So uh, I always feel good about that. And like I said, there was one significant walnut. There is a couple more on the property. Uh, so after talking to my, my um, specialists, uh, they can be challenging for growing stuff underneath going forward with native stuff. And, and so uh, not that I want to harvest all, but there is a couple there that maybe I'd like to continue to do and replace with something better. <clears throat> so um, anyway, uh, my goal too was trying to uh, obviously uh, take over the fragmentaries and, and revitalize it to a healthier habitat uh, that may exist in the future and invite back the wildlife. We now do have the odd ducks and geese flying in there, uh, which I, uh, I love to see, and that was not happening. I didn't recognize that as a wetland personally because I built the house here that on 183 Harris Road 24 years ago. So obviously we got a permit. You can see it's right on the bank of that wetland, which today probably obviously wouldn't happen. But at the time when I got the permit, there was no mention of wetland. Um, and I had no issues at all with doing uh, any projects. And so being the fact that I've been here ever since, I never... I, I never got the uh, the sense that it was regulated. Of course, the back where the Dingman was, I think I there's no question I knew that that was a regulated area, but I was not doing any work up there. It was all in front by the road. So uh, anyway, I um, I got the permit, I got it done, and then I've been working with Alice, and then I also am working with St. William's Nursery. Uh, I, I'll ask you guys if, if everybody got the letters from um, uh, from Alan Arthur. And ProScape, so those are the guys I've already been working with. So my intentions all along were to restore this, uh, the laneway, as I mentioned to uh, to Karen. And um, so they've got a couple of plans for me. Uh, St. Williams, if you're not too familiar with them, and maybe you are, I'm sure if you're in the conservation area, that's what they do is native plants and plugs and trees. I've already got 500 of them on order uh, to finish that on the side of the laneway. And uh, I really looked at uh, native trees and from what I understand it's hemlocks and uh, river birch so that's a couple of them anyway so when Karen pointed out to me that you your forestry side I could work with them uh, I'm just here to say that I certainly am willing to do all that I would really like to keep the laneway it is a separate lot it's a seven acre parcel um, and the laneway gives me access to it uh, there is a shared access right now but the laneway will give me access to uh, to that side of the property for proper maintenance and uh, I'm not looking to keep it pristine as far as maintenance go. I do want to keep it as a wetland. I feel that I've probably created more of a wetland than what was there, but uh, now I do understand the definition of a wetland. Uh, you know, if it's black muck and mushy, then that's considered a wetland. Um, so back, I think Karen pointed out to me back, you, you, the conservation area took over the area, I'm thinking in 2006. And, you know, I did ask the question, would, would I have been notified of that? And, she thought, no, not for sure. I'm not sure whether that's a standard thing to do or a practice to do. Um, nevertheless, um, um, I was not aware that that area was all protected. So again, I apologize for that. <clears throat> but now here we are, and uh, I'm certainly um, 
uh, understand where I've gone wrong. Uh, I think there is a few flaws. Uh, I did uh, I did obtain a, um, a permit, and uh, so I tried to do it lawfully and I did the work. Nowhere in the permit did it say anything about the land being regulated by the conservation area at the front, and, um, and I continue to do the land way. So um, anyway, I will um, I will ask the, the committee. Uh, I've got a YouTube video. I'm happy if Karen wants to play it for me, but if you've already seen it and don't feel a need to, I'm okay with that too. I thought the YouTube video, I did it myself, I'm obviously no professional, but I wanted to give you guys a feel of what it looks like and what it feels like is, as we all know, our life on Zoom right now is uh, is rather boring. <laughs> it would have been nice to come out there and take a walk and see it. So I hope it was informative to you. I know it's five minutes long, so again, I don't want to bore you with it, but if you want to play it, I'm happy to answer any questions as, as we go along. And uh, so I'll, I'll leave that at that. The letters are self-explanatory. I understand you both. Now, I had a letter come in late last night, Karen, that I sent you. I don't know if the committee was able to get a look at that. Um, I actually, did you? Okay, great. I got it at 11 o'clock last night. So uh, from Bernie Vanderbilt, I've known him for years. Uh, I reached out to him because I've known him for years, but uh, he's also a very conscientious um, conservation guy. And I've known that. So uh, my intent was to have him come in. He actually showed up on Wednesday. He walked the trail with me, uh, just like uh, Karen and I did. And uh, I said to him, you know, uh, you know, can you just give me an opinion on what you think I've done? And, and you know, uh, he said, uh, let me let me uh, read through all the reports. I sent him everything to look at it. So you've seen his letter. Uh, I think uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. And, and I appreciated his feedback on it because like I said I know he's a conservationary and again my intention was not to to destroy this but to improve it as I do live here. The back lot is is uh, is a buildable lot now with restrictions now which I've understood there's other areas other than the spot that I cleared the flat spot was not cleared for a building lot in the future. It was clear because it was a, a large mole of sand that we put there years ago. Uh, when we built the, the original house, uh, all the sand was at the top of the hill, built the laneway. So it was all la uh, uh, fill that was come from here. No NATO, like no foreign fill coming from anywhere else, which I was happy to do, uh, to use it off the land. So um, anyway, uh, I think I, I, I seen the maps that Karen sent on the presentation, which were great for me to see. <laughs> uh, if I had saw them earlier, would have uh, changed my mind. But when I'm looking at the map, I can clearly see I'm not really close to the erosion line and the southwest side where the laneway is. There's no erosion line there, although it is on a bit of a bank. So the bank side, as I explained in my YouTube video, was uh, was undisturbed. So um, I didn't disturb that. We just basically squared it off with the sand. And so we've got a buildup of sand on the right side of the laneway when you're walking in. And that's the area I'd like to restore. So speaking with uh, St. William's Nursery, are very uh, are very uh, in tune with Frank Mighty. There is a couple of options that he pointed out in his letter. Uh, one of them was covering with 36 inches of fill. Um, I thought that would be easier to, to change the slope of the laneway just to make it a little bit more uh, from erosion in the future. Although any erosion that's gonna happen anywhere there obviously is gonna go into that bowl area, which is on our property, but I'm not looking for erosion either. So that's where the plants and uh, stuff should be able to uh, to take over. So uh, without uh, further ado, I, I just I, I will certainly love to answer any questions. And again, if you want to go through the video and ask me the questions when we go on, I'm, I'm happy to do that. But I, I also don't want to bore you with uh, too many details. So I will turn it over to you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, accept any questions and if I can. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Scott. Um, so committee members, uh, so it, sorry, Alan, isn't it the staff that uh, does the questioning first? Yeah, I'm I, just wanted, to, I just wanted to clarify, um, Mr. Scott was mentioning the video and the two letters. So I just wanted to clarify that there was two emails sent out yesterday to the committee members uh, containing those three letters uh, that Mr. Scott referenced. So hopefully all the committee members saw those and um, hopefully everyone saw the video as well. So yeah, I did. just to answer Mr. Scott's question, does anyone want to see the video again or has everyone had a chance? I know that the volume was a little bit difficult on the video, but hopefully everyone saw it. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, would it be prudent to show it just so it's in the record for people live streaming or? Um, Karen or Jenna, can you help me out on that one? Uh, do we need to show the it again? Link, uh, sorry, through the chair to you, Mr. Chair. The link is in the hearing report. So if anyone really mm -hmm. wanted to see it, they can access it that way. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So if the committee members have all seen it, then we're okay. All right, so with that, yes, now we will, uh, we've now had the applicant present the material. So, um, does staff want to question the applicant at all? Do you have anything to add at this point? No questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Scott, do you have any questions of the Conservation Authority staff? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, I don't at this time. I, most of my questions have been, uh, <clears throat> been, been answered well. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. So now we will um, open it up to questions from the hearing committee members. So does any of the committee members have any questions at all for either staff or the applicant? <clears throat> And I'm not seeing or hearing anything. Oh, oh yeah, Ellen, I do. Okay, go ahead, Sandy. Uh, I'm curious about the pond. Uh, so roughly uh, through you to Karen, I think in your presentation, Karen, you said it was constructed around 2017. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm starting to lose. Uh internet so I might have I might turn off my camera if that's okay with everybody um, and and yes uh, Sandy I'm not sure the exact date the applicant would be able to tell you but it wasn't present in 2015 aerial photos but it was present in 2020 aerial photos okay and where I'm going with that is uh, given its location the map you showed showed it within the regulated area would it normally have required a permit Uh, yes, and I did discuss that with the uh, landowner as well. Normally, if someone's going to excavate in a wetland, even to create a wetland pond, we usually like to work with them on that. Um, we usually, one of the things I always ask for a wetland pond excavation is a minimum 15 meters, uh, that's 50 feet, uh, back from uh, any neighboring lot lines or municipal road allowance, just because it can, de depending on the soils, it can destabilize the road. Um, so I did take a look at that when I was out there, but it looks like that's all good. We normally don't like it too close to the road for safety reasons either and um, road salt reasons, but they, when they excavated, they made uh, sort of a berm um, with the excavated fill between the pond and the road. So, um, and just the lay of the land, I'm not worried about the road from, from what happened there. No, I appreciate that, but you did say that our uh, practice and the regulation would have said that was alteration to a wetland as well. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, curious about the uh, crick shown in the drawings. Is that something that uh, I don't know is uh, would be part of any permitting that we would give? Is it uh, consistent with our regulations? I was just a bit puzzled because it certainly, I don't see it on any of the maps. I, I'm not clear if it exists on the site. Could you, Karen, could you explain a little more please? Or if you can. And, and sorry, um, Sandy, I didn't hear. I'm, I'm yeah. losing the connection a bit here. Did, what, did you say the creek, the creek on the drawing? Yes, there's a drawing. It, it, it In the video, it's referred to as a crick. In oh, the yeah. drawing, it's referred as a stream. Yeah. Is it a feature that's currently yes, on the... It, yeah. It's not a... It would not be a regulated water course or stream. It's really just runoff right after a rainfall event, just with the grades in that area. And it's not... It's, it, it's, it's a high ridge there, so it's just water rushing up the high ridge. It's not a regulated stream at all. He listed it as a stream, and that's why I wanted to clarify it's not it's not anything we would uh, regulate. Right. Okay. 
Um, so it's in a regulated area, but it's not a stream we would, an, a water course we would regulate. No, I appreciate that. I mean, the, the whole issue, if I understand it, if we approve this, we need to deal with conditions of that as well. Um, I guess one other thing, so in, this is in Middlesex Center, is that correct? And their official plan, would a development assessment report be required to build a house, but not for a driveway? Is that your understanding, Karen? Um, so it depends on whether or not uh, they needed Planning Act approval. Uh -huh. um, I believe. Maybe uh, Tracy as a planner uh, could interrupt if I'm given incorrect information, but if they needed planning act approval to build a house back there, um, the property zoned ag. So I'm not sure of uh, Middlesex Center's rules. I know in one of our townships, you can't build a house unless you have an active farm um, um, business on the property. For this site in Middlesex and I'm not sure what the rules are. So if a planning, if a planning act approval was triggered, we would require a DAR for both the house, a proposed house, proposed septic and proposed driveway. If they just needed a building permit, um, the municipality wouldn't ask for it necessarily, but we would. Okay. So, uh, I, and I mentioned in the hearing support an environmental impact study, uh, that's the exact same thing as a, as a DAR, a development assessment report. It's just for some reason, Middlesex County calls it a DAR and everybody else in the world calls it an EIS. Okay. And the last question, Mr. Chair, is about the uh, wetland. Karen mentioned that it's unevaluated, but there are provincially significant wetlands that have been identified nearby. Are they within 750 meters of this uh, wetland? Uh, the reason I ask is because of complexing wetlands. Yes, I would have to. Uh, I would have to take. I would have to measure. I didn't measure that on the map, Sandy. But you can tell from the map where I, um, uh, the wetland map I showed, uh, it has a scale on there. If you want me to go back, let me just check. No, no, no. I, I okay. where again? Sorry, Karen. Where I'm going with that is is. Yes, I, I, I understand where you're going. It is provincially <laughs> significant wetland at the north side of that, at the, the wetland at the north end of that wetland map. So I'll let you check the scale on that. Yeah, uh, the other piece I was going with that is, would we ever, or let me think about this for a minute, is that would we, if we were to grant a permit, would we, have as a condition that an entire Ontario wetland assessment be done to determine if the wetland is part of the complex or given it looks like it crosses um, property lines, we couldn't really get a full evaluation. I'm kind of looking for an opinion on this, Karen. I'm not really sure that we've ever specifically asked for that, but it would normally be part of what the consultants would would look at is, is you know how close things are to the provincially significant wetland and whether or not we're part of the complex is usually something that shows up in the EIS. Okay. But I mean, it would still have to be approved by um, the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources and Forestry or whatever their acronym uh, is now, NDN, <laughs> MNRF. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No more questions at this point. Okay, thank you. Any other committee members with questions? I have one, just while we have a Marie, moment here. Alan. I oh, go ahead, go ahead, Marie. Uh, okay, thank you. I thought I raised, did that raise hand feature, but I'm having a little bit of problem with the internet, which is why I turned the camera off. Um, I just had a couple of, uh, questions. It's, I think if we had a site visit, it would be clear, but um, without that, the video was very helpful, but if I could get a little more clarification on the driveway. I said it was 450 feet. It appeared to be paved until 
we saw the snow. So I was wondering, but what's the width of the driveway? And does what is the point of it? Is it to lead to the clearing or is it to access the house? Mr. Chairman, uh, can I answer that or? Yeah, that yeah go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, uh, thank you. So the, the, uh, the it is all, the front of the laneway is uh, is gravel. It's just a gravel laneway. Uh, I believe they had, uh, we had a, a width of the opening of it six meters, but the laneway does narrow down to uh, probably around the four meters. Uh, my goal was not to make it big and crazy. Not, have no intentions of paving it. Uh, wanted to keep it more of a country road if I could, and uh, the, the purpose of it was to access that side of the of the wetland in order to uh, maintain the Frank Mighty going forward, and then it will it will be the entrance for that back property uh, in the future. Well, it is now. That's what it's doing is accessing that back property. So uh, again, we have no intentions of building back there in right now in the future, but it is a buildable. But and so uh, I, I, maybe someday that will happen, but that was not my intentions at this point. I will certainly be in touch with Karen going forward on what I would be required to do that. With. So, okay. That answer your Thank question? Yeah, it does. And so your intent then is to maintain that clearing as a clearing, not to not to no, put the no. frustration you're talking about would not go in there. Uh, actually, no. I do plan to restore that area. With some, with some, uh, with some plants and trees, like along the the borders of it, there may be the center. We may keep an opening in the center if, if, if uh, you know, if you guys so approve. Uh, we certainly would. I mean, I'm willing to work with you. I have no intentions of putting a house or building right, right at the moment now. And uh, there's an area there that I'd like to add some trees and shrubs for sure. But I would call it more of a border. Like we had border over it drops off to the uh, to the Dingman Creek. We definitely want to put some stuff in there for sure to uh, to maintain its uh its look okay and so then just to just to just to be clear the the act your existing home your access yeah. to that would still be through the shared driveway yes that's correct yeah okay okay thank you yep okay thanks marie other committee members with questions Yeah, and I have a new question. Okay, go ahead, Sandy. Thank you. Uh, through you to staff, uh, if at the end of our discussions we uh, do not issue a permit, is a direction needed to do restoration or what might be the options for, uh, for us given the alterations that have already taken place? Because I assume if we accept, uh, if we grant the permit, we'll have to talk about various conditions, obviously. But if we turn it down, is there something that we need to direct on this? I mean, uh, if the permit were to be were to be denied, I would um, like to think that we could work with Mr. Scott to remove the driveway and restore. The footprint of the actual driveway um, because obviously the alternative is uh, to deal with it as a violation and possibly legal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sorry, going the legal route. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Um, Brian, you have some questions? Uh, I have one question through you, Mr. Chair, uh, to the applicant. Uh, was the driveway engineered or was it just filled up? Well, Brian, sorry, Brian, you, you froze up there. Could you repeat your, your oh, question there, Brian? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm get, I did just get the internet unstable method here, but um, okay, sorry about that. I just said, do we, was the engineer, was the laneway built to an engineer standard or was it just uh, fill that was pushed along the path? Do we have uh, any um, information pertaining to that? I just want to ensure that if it is accepted that that driveway is stable, it's not going to create an erosion hazard itself. Uh, thanks for the question. Through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, yep. uh, the, uh, the laneway was constructed uh, by a, a professional 
company. Uh, I don't have a per se engineering spec on it. Like we never did that and they traditionally don't, uh, but it certainly was uh, done to their specs. Uh, it was um, Joe Louie is the construction company, Louie Construction of the Strathroy. Uh, they do lots of work here in Millsex Center. Uh, and so um, he's still glad to put it in. So it was done professionally for sure. Okay, other question at all, Brian? No, that's, that's it. Okay. Um, okay, I have a question then for through to staff, Karen. Um, attachment number six is showing the, the Middlesex Natural Heritage Study. And it's showing the area along the west edge of the property where the laneway is. And it's all, you know, being shown here as being um, ecologically significant ecologically important. Um, however, that's not one of the five tests. Your other attachments reference, you know, the five tests, um, but the natural heritage study isn't part of that. So how do we, how do we reconcile that? I guess that's more for information, but also it shows uh, we generally when there's work being done within the 120 meters of a wetland, one of the things that gets assessed for is is the protected wetland or sorry woodland in that area of interference, right? So it's information that would be used as part of environmental impact study, or we still look at vegetation. Um, within and adjacent to wetland to see if it's wetland vegetation, right? So protected trees, it, it lists the whole area, the wetland before and after the pond was, was excavated as protected uh, woodland areas um, as a feature. So it's still, I mean, it's hard to take the trees and the vegetation out of the wetland itself. Yeah. Okay. We generally leave tree removal not in a wetland to uh, the county. Um, under their uh, woodlands and uh, by law enforcement officer. Okay. And that would have, um, you know, that would be triggered by certain, probably a certain area or a certain number of trees. Uh, I don't know what their, what their county tree cutting bylaw stipulates, but uh, I'm assuming there would be a minimum number or minimum size. Uh, I think it's any trees within the feature. I'm, I'm not sure okay. the details because it, it seems like they're always changing uh, and I'm not sure what the bylaw states specifically, but the okay. county has been out to the site as well. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, we don't have any, uh, any information from the county though. They haven't issued any uh, um, letter or any uh, orders or anything at all on this property. Um, I believe they have issued a stop work order. Okay, well, that's good to know. Okay. Other questions or comments at all from committee members? I have a question for you, Mr. Scott. Um, I know that uh, in the letter, um, from St. Williams, they mentioned about the uh, uh, restoration of the area and they talked about, uh, you might wanna consider spraying of the Phragmites um, as opposed to uh, putting in the three feet of fill. And I'm just, in all seriousness, if you are allowed to proceed and you put in the three feet of fill and you, know, you still have Phragmites across the road and in the area, and if Phragmites becomes established again on your property, um, what are you going to do then? And I, I, you know, in all seriousness, that's a that's a possibility. And I, I wonder uh, what, what you know what your plan would be the second time around. Yes, uh, thank you. Through the chair, to the chair. <clears throat> Um, we've spoken about that. Uh, there is herbicide that's available. And uh, right now, the way it stands, I couldn't personally do it myself because I don't have the equipment to get down the black muck. I'm there. I'd be getting pulled out by a tow truck. So 
the actual laneway access will give you an access to put a boom out there or or actually be able to walk on if we if we care if we are able to bury it you'll be able to go out there with a hand sprayer backpack sprayer i do have a little sprayer for my tractor uh, and this herbicide seems to be very effective but you're absolutely right i have to stay on it so right now i couldn't do it i don't have the equipment to do it and so i guess i there's probably people i could hire that would be able to do it but they also would have to access it from the road rather than than, than the laneway area and um so but my intentions are exactly that the frank mighty took over it, i'm going to say it's even been 10 years because Prior to that, it was uh, Blue Strife. You guys are probably familiar with that, that whole area. And, and actually, I enjoyed looking at that, believe it or not. It was evasive, but at least it was pretty. And um, um, yeah, so anyway, that's, I would, to answer your question, we will be watching it with herbicide. I'm doing that even now, a little bit in the pond. I've talked to them about, like, he says, if you see it coming up, you need to cut it off below water. It will eventually drown. So I have a little canoe or a boat and I go in there and hand cut it. I've been doing that for the last couple of years. So, and if I could comment one more thing too, to, if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, I just yeah, want to answer the, I just wanted to answer the, um, the question about the crick that we drew on there. That was a, a drawing that my wife did to represent, there is no crick there now. It's just an open flat land, but we thought uh, that the water comes from underneath, I believe from the water table and stuff, so and it would be runoff. So we were actually creating a, a more natural path for the runoff from the top of the hill to go there. The creek doesn't need to be there if not wanted. It was just part of our drawing to make it look like it would use, which is probably confusing to some of you. But I want to clarify, there is no creek there right now. And, and I'm happy to leave it that way if that's not. It was just a way of pretty enough. We thought we'd put some, you know, some stone around there or whatever and, and make it happen. But it doesn't need to be. I'm very open to work with you guys. Thank you. And thank you. And you have a, you also mentioned you install a culvert there as well. Um, so obviously, it's, you know, runoff coming from the west side of the driveway will come under uh, through the culvert and then proceed down to that low area. Uh, yes, through, uh, through the chair to, to the chair. Uh, that's correct. The culvert, it is not a wet area right there where that culvert is. That was the driest spot. There's no black muck there uh, at all where that culvert goes. But uh, when the, as I mentioned, the fellows that put the driveway are professionals, they said this would be a good way to have any runoff because it, it does go uphill and it would come from more than north. The back and the, I guess the west, northwesterly corner is like right now covered in snow. It would run and sit in that valley. And we just thought that would give it a free access to, to that. And that's why I was enhancing the creek, thinking we just make it work. If it turns into a little creek, that would be perfect. Do you know how big a culvert it is? It was installed? Uh, it is, I believe, um, 12, like it was, it was a eight meters long. And then I believe it's a 12 inch. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Thanks. Other um, questions from committee members? I'm not seeing or hearing anything. Do the committee members have any more information that they would like clarified or anything else they would like to see? Or are the committee members interested in moving in separately into deliberate? I'm um, happy to move that we go in camera to deliberate, Mr. Chair. I would okay. second that. that. Moved by Sandy. I think that was Tony that seconded that. Yep. Okay, any comments or questions then on the motion to, uh, to have the committee go in and deliberate in closed session? I'm not seeing any uh, hands or hearing anybody, so I'll call for the vote. And Michelle, if you could do the roll on the vote, please. Mary Blosh? Yes. Tony Jackson? Yes. Sandy Levin? Yes. Brian Petrie? You there, Brian? Are you on mute? Brian? Yes. And Alan Dale? Yes. Okay, so that motion's carried. So the committee will now go into closed session to discuss and deliberate. Um, everyone else, 
Um, Emily's well, going to put you in the waiting room. I don't know how long we're going to be. I can't uh, give you an answer at this point, but um, um, we will endeavor to, uh, to get back to everyone as soon as we can. And Stop my screen. Can do screen share. Stop sharing, Michelle. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. Uh, stop sharing. OK, we're back. And everyone is here. We're back live. Are we good? Oh, sorry. Okay, we're back again. Yeah. Okay, we got everybody yeah. here. Okay, um, so we're back in live session here. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around here. We didn't know how long we we're going to be, but uh, um, glad to have everyone back. And I can tell you that the, the committee had some really good discussion, and uh, we have reached a decision. And uh, if we could... Uh, Put that up there and I will read the decision. Okay, so notwithstanding the staff recommendation and despite concerns over activities that occurred prior to this hearing, the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority Hearing Committee grants the approved per permit, sorry, grants the permit for application number 03-22 for the proposed interference with the wetland and proposed development within an erosion hazard associated with the river or stream valley and the area regulated by the Conservation Authority at 181 and 183 Harris Road, Municipality of Middlesex Center, Delaware, Ontario, with the following conditions. That a restoration plan be prepared, approved, and completed to the satisfaction of UTRCA staff and that the applicant be responsible for the payment of all staff time with respect to such preparation, approval, and completion. So I hope that's cleared everyone. Um, as I said, we had some good discussion. There were a number of concerns and um, this was our, our ultimate decision. And um, we'd like to see that the uh, the applicant continued to, to work with uh, his restoration project uh, and that Upper Thames staff be involved. And uh, as I said in the motion that they uh, help with preparing approval and completion of a restoration plan. Does the staff or applicant have any questions at all on that motion? Hopefully everyone's clear on that. Okay. Well, if everyone's good, um, I don't think there's anything else for today's meeting. We just have the one application to deal with. So I would like to, uh, to thank staff, um, certainly Karen and Jenna uh, for all your work on this file. Uh, I'd like to thank the applicant, Mr. Scott, for your presentation and getting the materials to us and your participation in today's hearing. And if there's no other comments or questions, um, we just need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Scott. Uh, yeah, I, I just um, I just wanted to uh, thank you and the staff and, and the whole committee for doing this presentation uh, for me. And uh, I look forward to working with Karen. But uh, I know it took some time on your day. So again, I apologize for that. But I do, I do appreciate it and, uh, and uh, plan to not disappoint. So uh, like I said, I look forward to working with Karen. And thank you all for your decision. Okay, well, thank you. And, and yeah, no, that's, um, this is our day. This is what we're, we're here to do is to make a decision and hold the hearing. Um, and as we said in the motion, we, we did have some concerns about prior activities, but um, 
we do feel that there's an opportunity to, to work with you and um, to do some restoration on the property. And we're hoping that uh, at the end of the day, there can be some, uh, some wins on both sides. Um, you'll have a driveway and, and we'll have uh, uh, some, some protection and some restoration of the wetland and that uh, hopefully everyone comes away um, with some gains and feeling good about what happens and, and we can uh, work together going forward. So, okay, thank you. Um, anyone else? There's no other comments then. Um, again, a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. So moved. Moved by Brian that the meeting be adjourned for today's hearing committee. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much again, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of the day. It's cold out there, but uh, at least the sun is shining. Um, thank you to everyone. Um, I think Michelle and and um, Michelle and Tracy and Brian and I have a little meeting now. Um, so we're gonna, we'll stay on the line and talk for a few minutes and figure out what we're doing. Um, everyone else, have a good day. As I said, uh, thank you very much, Emily. Job well done. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to everyone soon. Thank you. Okay.